Okay, this is my introduction video um, for content and just my own personal interest. Uh, I'm going to do a series on really inexpensive shotguns that are either out of Turkey or maybe even China. I don't know because the thing about these firearms is they have so many different names and so many different uh, people distributing them and company names that it's highly confusing. But what is happening is the market was flooded about two years ago. When I watched the videos, you know, two years ago, everybody was showing these guns that I recently bought. And the price of them was, you know, okay, pump shotguns were about 200, a little over $200. I bought one for $110, okay? They all try to copy, I guess a Benelli uh, was adopted by the Marine Corps semi-automatic shotgun. They all try copying that in one form or another, and they used to be about 250, 300. I bought one for $150, and I have the next video I'm gonna do, we're gonna look at that one. The other two were on the way. And then the third shotgun that I bought was one of these semi-autos that resembles like an AR-15 platform with the mag up front. They come in two ways. They have all these variations that look like an AR, and they have bullpup ones, both in pump and semi, where the magazine for the shotgun goes in the back. But I remember somebody said they wanted one, and when I went to a gun show to price them, they were all five to six hundred dollars, and I purchased one of these, and they all kind of look the same, come with different names and different companies or distributors. I got this for one ninety nine ninety nine, so I got it for one cent under two hundred dollars for a gun that, and this is just three years ago is when these things hit the market. Three years ago, that gun would have been 500 bucks. So, I'm gonna look at this because if these guns have any value or can be worked with or something, okay, at that price point, okay, unless the thing is really something that just breaks down horribly, uh, it might be something to look into, and what, so you go, well, why is this happening? Why, why are they lowering the price? Well, obviously, uh, everything gets reviewed either on YouTube or God knows where, and you see a lot of videos out there of people shooting these guns. One of them that I watched, and I watched several of these, uh, where was it here? Ah. TFB TV, and this one fellow goes out, he does what he calls a 500 round burn down. And he takes all of these guns, he's even taken a pump shotgun out there, and he just runs three inch mag ammo and all kinds of ammo to them until they about fall apart. Okay. And also, ammunition for these guns is expensive. Okay, I got some three inch mags to test, and I don't think I got 60 rounds of ammo or something like that, and it almost cost me a hundred bucks. Okay, but it will test these guns out, and I have not had a lot of experience in three inch mags. Now, after a certain point in time, okay, uh, all 12 gauges come in a three inch chamber, and that started years ago. Okay, so any 12 gauge you buy now, generally going to have a 3 inch chamber and the gun is built to handle the 3 inch shell. Okay, that's kind of a standard now. Before it used to be the uh, 2 and 3 quarter inch. Some of these guns have adjustable chokes, some of these don't. They come in all very shapes and forms. But we're going to look at a couple of the real, real inexpensive ones and I'm going to test them out. Now, when it comes to shotguns, I really on this channel have not done a lot of work with defensive shotguns because my range wouldn't allow me to fire slugs and buckshot. But now, they 
gotten a new group of people running it. Uh, and a lot of the members request because they want to take their tactical guns out and practice with them. So they changed the rules and now I can go on my uh, club to the range, one range, and fire buckshot and slugs uh, and make a video on it. So that's kind of why I didn't do it. Now my experience with shotguns has either been just hunting or shooting trap. Okay, I shot trap for many years and I think I may have put over 10,000 rounds of shotgun shells through my BT-99 and I had an over and under, a Weatherby over and under in those years that I shot uh, trap as a hobby. And also my experience in underpriced guns. I don't know if everybody remembers the Remington Spartans, these Russian shotguns that were made in by call by the Russians and Remington marketed them a few years ago and these were like the scourge. Like I got these over and unders to shoot uh, ski. And I had a 12, 20 and this 28 gauge. These guns are rough uh, and like I said shooting when you compete in a few years if you're really into it you're talking you're putting Five, ten thousand rounds through a gun. Okay, these guns are rugged, they're somewhat reliable, but what it was is they weren't built to stand up. They're a nice hunting gun. Now, if you just went and hunted with this, fire a few rounds a year, or say even a hundred rounds a year practicing in that, these guns are reliable, will last a long time. If you go out and compete and are shooting, you know four or five hundred rounds, you know, three, four times a month through these, these guns do not stand up. And the reason I kept this one is out of all of them, this gun patters and shoots the straightest. Now at the time, the Turks were making guns under tricep over and unders trying to compete with them. And I bought one of them and it was so bad, the barrel, when they solder the barrels on the rib, must have been bent because it took me a while, I kept missing. And what it was, at a certain distance, that barrel was bent so bad, the shotgun pattern was about, I'd say, 20 yards. It was three feet to where my point of aim was. So, that gun had to go. And since we're covering defensive shotguns and, you know, uh, that style, you know, home defense or a military shotgun, people will ask, well, what do you have? What do you carry? And well, over the years I've had several guns. I got this old Remington 870 with a rifle sighted deer slug barrel. Actually, it's a pretty rare barrel. And this is no different than when Remington made them for the police or military. The finish might have been different. Instead of the rifle sights, it would just have one bead on the front. But this was the standard for many years until it was overcome by the Mossberg 500. Uh, what it was, and the Mossberg 500 back in the 70s and that was, was a crappy gun. Mossberg went and took over in as far as the 12 gauge pump police and military uh, shotgun. Mossberg 500 is superseded and I think I had a 590 which the Marine Corps adopted and I got that back in the late 80s and I had the heat shield and take a bayonet and all the others it was a nice gun but you know that satisfies my needs here at the house I really don't need a full style military weapon with extended tube and a bayonet attachment and all that other stuff and even though that one's a two and three quarter, that's an older gun. Even though these guns are chambered in three inch mag, I really never had much experience with the three inch mag because I bought a Mossberg Cruiser. And I bought the one with the 20 inch barrel and extended magazine, the pistol grip. I remember I bought that. And when I bought it, the guy in the shop goes, here, I got some of these 3-inch Magnum buckshot loads by Winchester. 
And I said, yeah, I'll take two boxes. So he gave me two five-round boxes. I tried, I think I got, I attempted to fire two rounds out of that cruiser. Not good. I mean, it was totally stupid. You couldn't hang on to the weapon and fire it, no matter what you did. Okay, I almost hit myself in the head with the damn thing. I mean, it just comes out of your hand, no matter how you, unless you grab the top of the barrel and hold it down like that. You ain't holding on to it. And then my buddy had a pump shotgun with an 18-inch barrel. It had a 3-inch chamber in it. And we went up to his camp, and the other three rounds, we tried firing that gun. And I think he fired one, and I fired the other two. And I mean, we couldn't hold, no matter what, we could not hold on to the gun with the stock. It would come up out of our hands. We almost... It would almost fly out of our hands because the fore, the stock or the forehand, you know, you can grab it, but there's nothing there when that force comes and it recoil. No matter how hard you grip it, your hand slips off of that. So needless to say, I never believed I needed the power of a three inch magnum and I've never fired it in some of the guns I had with three inch chambers. So now these guns have three inch chambers and that's what that TFB TV guy does is you know and that's where these things go awry is when they start firing the three inch magnums. Okay? And of course he well if they advertise it, why don't they say it's just for two and three quarter? And then we'll bring up the question of, do you need a 3-inch map? Okay. But we'll discuss that as we go along further. All right. So watch the series. Thank you, and stay tuned.